Hi guys and welcome back to What If X Managed Arsenal, a series where we put you know various gaffers in the Arsenal hot seat and see how they get on with you know the discussion of possible Wenger out and all that kind of thing coming in the summer. So today on the night where Monaco will play Juventus, we've already done Max Allegri, so it's time to look at Leonardo Jardim, the Monaco manager, and see how he gets on at Arsenal. As you can already see. He does win the title, 86 points, 6 losses, a 38 goal difference, the best in the league. And the top goal scorer is uh, Olivier Giroud in the Premier League. Uh, nobody on the assist chart there, and Monreal sneaking on to the average rating chart there with a 7.69. Uh, nobody competing for the most played of the match awards. Check with 14 clean sheets just behind Courtois' 16 there. So let's dive into the squad and see how he's set up his tactics. He's went with a 4-2-2-2 there. Uh, he has put, well, he's playing Martinez in goals there, so certainly not as the lineup he would go with, but I'm assuming this is probably the, the obviously the formation he would go with. So if we look at who he's played, he's played 56 games. He's played Koscielny, so definitely liking Koscielny. Mustafi, Giroud, Sanchez, Ozil, Czech, Bellerin, Monreal, Luan, Santi Cazorla, all playing... Massive amounts of games. Oxlade Chamberlain, Theo Walcott getting a, quite a few as well in the 20s there. Then it drops down a bit to Gibbs, Xhaka, Coquelin, Ramsey, Iwobi, Ospina, and then down to single figures for Lucas, Paul Estelle, Nenny, Wilbeck, Mertesacker, and Martinez. So let's have a little look at the goals. Giroud, as you would expect, being the top score scorer in the Premier League, has the most, with 31 goals leading the charts. Luan comes in just behind, well, a fair bit behind him actually, with 19 goals. And Alexis Sanchez after that was 16. And then it's actually down to Lucas on 8. Lucas who only started 9 games but came off the bench 30 times. So not a very big spread of goals. Then you've got Chamberlain, uh, Cazorla, Walcott on 6. Ozil got 5. 3 for Iwobi, 2 for Welbeck. And then there's a whole bunch with 1. So in terms of goal scorers, not spread out that much. Between Loan and Giroud, they got 50, so that's pretty good. Sanchez chipping in as well with 16, so not bad, not bad, but relying quite a bit on Giroud there. In terms of his average rating, Koscielny with the best average rating in the side, which explains why he managed to get the 56 appearances there. Nacho Monreal, who was the old, you know, probably, well, must have been actually their best rated player in the Premier League. But overall, he sneaks in just behind Koscielny. Then it's Ozio, who has actually been insanely consistent over the period that we've done these simulations which <laughs> you know if you could find a period of consistency in reality maybe he would be that world class playmaker that Arsenal need but certainly his consistency something he's finding in abundance here in these simulations is what's letting him down in real life uh, then we go to Sanchez of course Mertesacker did well when he played but not exactly a big sample size there Mustafi did well, Giroud obviously Luan obviously, Bellerin and Czech doing well, Gibbs and Ospina also above that 7 rating then some decent performances from a couple of guys but nothing really particular to write home about, Theo Walcott got 22 starts and was quite disappointing overall 15 starts for Coquelin who was also disappointing but generally what you would expect, the players who played tons of games justifying their selection although I think Big Per Mertesacker has been a little unfortunate there, playing well when he did play and not getting more game time. But let's take a look at the transfers. Uh, as you would expect, only Luan coming in and Carl Jenkinson, the only one going out. So not much to talk about the transfer front. Several of the Arsenal gaffers have bought Luan. Um, he actually didn't get rid of Gabriel, which is interesting. Can we find Gabriel? There he is. He started eight games and played ten off the bench. So he really didn't use Gabriel, but he didn't sell him to China like a lot of the other gaffers have. So we'll have a little look here. Uh, Champions League. He drew Real Madrid, which is a bit unfortunate. Lost at the Bernabeu. Uh, beat Gladbach at the Emirates. Beat PSV in Holland. Uh, at, during that time, he he beat Tottenham, actually, in the EFL Cup, 2 nothing, And then he beat Leicester, 2-1. Uh, where are we? He beat Real Madrid at the Emirates in the group stage, which is crazy. Quarter final beat Middlesbrough. Uh, drew away at Gladbach. Did I miss something there? Yeah, I missed PSV. He beat PSV at home as well. Uh, quarter final did that. FA Cup third round, two 0 win at Everton. So he's doing very well in the big games when it counts. EFL Cup semi final, four one home win in the first leg against Queen's Park Rangers. A 2-2 draw away at QPR, but of course that gets him to the final. Then he actually slips up for the first time in cup competition 
against Wolves, 2-1 going out there, not great. He draws Red Bull Salzburg, so he definitely should get through to the quarterfinal in the Champions League, 2-1 win away. Uh, he picks up the EFL Cup by beating Burnley on penalties, not the strongest final victory, but it is a trophy. Continuing forward, he wins 4-0 against Red Bull Salzburg in the Champions League, so through to the quarterfinal in that one. That's the only thing apart from the Premier League left to play for, which we already know he wins. He gets a 2-1 win away at Sevilla in the quarter-final of the Champions League. And then he wins 3-0 at home to Sevilla in the Champions League. So that takes him to the semi-final, where they draw Bayern. <laughs> and I think you can guess what happens now. A 2-0 loss away at the Allianz Arena. And a 2-1 win at home, but not enough to send them through. Bayern go through above Arsenal once again at the expense of Arsenal. So many gaffers during this simulation, actually. If you go back and check the other episodes I've done so far, so many gaffers have actually fallen to Bayern that it's quite comical. Um, but if we look at the Champions League, I don't usually do this, but I'm interested to see if Bayern win. No, they lose 1-0 to Barcelona. Okay. So... Not bad for Jardim, he definitely he gets a, a double EFL Cup and the Premier League, so definitely Arsenal fans would take that in real life. And it seems that football manager thinks Arsenal should be doing a lot better because most of these gaffers now, I actually think, I think a majority of them have won the Premier League and a couple of them have picked up other trophies as well. So just on the eve of Monaco's... Champions League semi-final clash against Juventus, I thought we would take a look at uh, Jardim and how he got on at Arsenal so he does very well there next gaffer we're going to take a look at probably maybe Claudio Ranieri uh, he's won the Premier League more recently than Arsene Wenger so it'd be interesting to see how he could get on if we gave him the Arsenal job we gave him the reins there but that's going to be it for this episode so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time